In this lecture, I'm going to examine a little bit how the word honest is used in Much Ado About Nothing, building on the information that we found using the Oxford English Dictionary and the Shakespeare Concordance. So as we've discussed, Shakespeare's language is very rich in its meaning. He's always playing with the multiple connotations that a word might have. So our goal is to explore how one word can be used to evoke different meanings in a particular passage and how that enriches our understanding of the play. So we, our goal here, find a significant word and explore its different uses in Much Ado About Nothing. And so the basic steps to look up the word in the Oxford English Dictionary, identify the different meanings that are pertinent, that would have been current in Shakespeare's time, Using the Shakespeare Concordance, then we find where that word is used in Much Ado About Nothing. And then we look at some of the individual meanings and discuss what meanings, or the individual uses, and discuss what meanings are evoked based on the different possible meanings. Now, the word that I picked from our uh, previous lecture on the OED was honest. And just a brief overview, some of the major definitions associated with honest, when it's applied to things, it means things that are magnificent or respectable, worthy of honor. When it's applied to people in Shakespeare's time, it can mean someone who holds a position of honor. It can be uh, an epithet or a, a, a title of praise or appreciation, especially for someone who is of lower status. So you might say, ah, look, here's my honest servant or my honest uh, barber or my honest blacksmith, whatever it might be. Um, when applied to people, honest can mean moral or virtuous. When it's applied to a woman in particular in Shakespeare's time, honest has the connotation of sexually chaste or virginal or sexually appropriate, moral, according to their morality. Um, and then, of course, our usage of the word honest is a later usage of it in Shakespeare's time, one who doesn't lie, one who is free from deceit or trickery. And it can also be applied to actions, and those are actions that are done sincerely or truthfully with good intentions. So this is an overview of some of the basic definitions of honest. Looking at the Shakespeare Concordance, we see that honest is used 18 different places in Much Ado, uh, 20 individual uses. And this includes uh, honestly, dishonest, so anything that has the word honest in it, any variation. And we can see that it's spoken by these characters, uh, interestingly enough, spoken by Dogberry more than any, uh, and then by Benedict. The, some of the men speak it, and Hero speaks it once. Let's look at Hero's usage of the word honest. And the context, this is Act 3, Scene 1. This is when they are playing the love trick on Beatrice and Benedict, getting them to fall in love with each other. Beatrice is listening to Hero. Hero has... Uh, made up the story that Benedict is in love with Beatrice, and she is saying, well, Beatrice, my cousin is so mean, I'm going to tell Benedict that he should give up his love. And, of course, she knows all the time that Beatrice is overhearing, and the plan is that Beatrice will be moved by this to fall in love herself with Benedict. And, of course, the men play the same trick the other way on Benedict. And Hero says, no, rather I will go to Benedict and counsel him to fight against his passion. And truly, I'll devise some honest slanders to stain my cousin with. One doth not know how much an ill word may empoison liking. So in other words, I'll go tell Be Be Benedict some bad things about Beatrice, and that will get him to stop loving her. So let's start with that term, honest slanders. Well, slander is a false statement meant to defame someone's character. So to say honest slander... Is that a contradiction or an oxymoron, since honest normally would mean truthful and slander would mean false statement meant to, to hurt someone? Well, the Norton Shakespeare glosses honest as harmless in this case. So harmless slanders, small, petty insults, things that aren't that bad. That's one possible, and I would say the simplest meaning of hero's words. But what are some other possible definitions? Well, if we look at the OED, Definition 4a, of an action, feeling, etc., an honest action, is something that's done with or expressive of truthfulness, fairness, or integrity of character or intention, free from deceit, genuine, sincere, or done with good intentions, even if unsuccessful or misguided. So if we use this definition for the phrase honest slanders, what does that mean? Well, maybe slanders that 
appear truthful and that Hero will appear truthful when she makes the slanders, even if they're not true. They're done with a certain sincerity because she's trying to save Benedict. There's a good intention behind them. She's trying to save him from his love for Beatrice, even if the slanders themselves might not be true. So the slanders are harmless. They're harmless, petty little slanders, but they're also slanders that appear truthful and that are done with a truthful intention. Of course, the irony being that Hero is saying this, knowing that she's not really going to do this, knowing that Beatrice is overhearing it. So there's a whole nother level of deceit slash appearance on top of this statement. Is that the only possible definition, though? Well, again, OED, the Oxford English Dictionary, definition 3B, when honest is used of a woman, it means virtuous as regards sexual morality, someone who's chaste or virginal. So honest slanders are those slanders against Beatrice's honesty, perhaps? Is Hero suggesting that she's going to imply that Beatrice is not totally honest or chaste as a way to turn Benedict off? That's another possible meaning of these slanders. So what do we get when we put all of these together? Well, Hero says that the slanders will be harmless, innocent, mild, and they're going to be done with true sincerity. She's doing them. She's going to appear truthful because she sincerely wants Benedict to be saved from his love. So there's good intentions behind this as well. But again, with that hidden suggestion of sexuality, of sexual connotations in the slanders that perhaps Beatrice's chaste chastity will be called into doubt. So the question we might ask ourselves is, how intentional are all these meanings? That is, how aware is Hero herself of the multiple connotations of her words? And is she doing, is she speaking these words in order to suggest all of these things? Well, certainly we can say Shakespeare was aware of it, or it seems to have been because of his excellent craftsmanship. Hero herself, now that depends on how we interpret her character. Hero is often interpreted as very innocent and naive, and that's, you know, I think a fair reading. She seems throughout the play to not really have much of an understanding of how the world works. So perhaps she herself doesn't even realize the sexual connotations of her words, that she's, that, that honesty when she's talking about honest slanders could be slandering Beatrice's chastity. We, as the audience, do recognize that, so there's a certain dramatic irony there. And even more so, that this ironically foreshadows the dishonest slanders that will be leveled against Hero. Hero says she's going to slander Beatrice, and Hero is the one herself who ends up slandered. On the other hand, we might say, well, perhaps Hero is innocent and naive, but she does have desire of her own. She does love Claudio. She wants to be married to Claudio. So maybe she's not entirely conscious of the meanings, but maybe there is an unconscious part of her that realizes the sexual connotation. Something in her that is wants to talk about or think about sex because she is a young woman on the verge of marriage. So it really depends on how we see the character and how we see her embedded in her situation. So let's move on to a different use of honest, this one by Don John. This comes in Act 1, Scene 3. The context is he's talking to Conrad and Baraccio about himself and his hatred for his brother Don Pedro, for Benedict, and for Claudio. And he says, I had rather be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his grace, and it better fits my blood to be disdained of all than to fashion a carriage to rob love from any. In this, though I cannot be said to be a flattering, honest man, it must not be denied but I am a plain-dealing villain. So he says, I don't want to be liked by him. I don't want to try to make him love me. I am a plain-dealing villain. Let's first look at that opposition between a flattering, honest man and a plain-dealing villain. 
Well, what does plain dealing mean? It means straight, direct, free from deceit. Someone who deals plainly, they do it all out in the open. So to call someone a plain dealing villain, they're an honest villain or a truthful villain. That sounds a bit like a contradiction. On the other hand, flattering honest man. Well, flattery is praise through insincerity, through dishonesty. So a flattering honest man is a man who flatters honestly, is a man who is honest in their insincerity. Again, this seems like a contradiction. So Don John is saying, I'm not this one contradictory thing, I'm this other contradictory thing. And neither of them seem to make sense on the surface. So let's think about some definitions for honest here, some possible definitions. Well, from the Oxford English Dictionary 1D, with reference to appearance, it could be presentable, decent, respectable, neat, tidy, without blemish. From the OED 2A, of a person, it could be someone who's holding a position of honor, distinguished, noble, or held in good esteem, respectable, reputable. And 2B, as a general epithet of appreciation or praise for a person, as used in a patronizing way to or of an inferior, like my good man, my honest man. So these are some definitions that I've picked out, and let's see how they can work in this section. So what is, then, a flattering, honest man? It's a man who appears honorable and respectable, someone who has been given repute or honor. Why? Because he's willing to flatter his superiors, which, according to Don John, is what Claudio has done, and Don John hates Claudio. A flattering, honest man could be a man who holds a distinguished position, who holds a position of honor. And how did he get that position of honor? Because he has flattered his way to the top. Again, like Claudio, or what Don John accuses Claudio of doing. And a flattering, honest man is also a man who, despite his position, is still treated as inferior by those whom he has flattered, is still called an honest servant, for example, by those in higher positions, again, like Claudio, whom Don John hates, no matter how much Claudio might flatter or be friends with Don Pedro, he's still Don Pedro's inferior. So remember, Don John is angry that Claudio and Benedict are so high in Don Pedro's esteem while he is treated like a criminal. But he hates Don Pedro and he doesn't want to have to flatter or serve him. So his use of honest reveals the somewhat contradictions in his desires, that he's angry that these people have gotten this position under Don Pedro that he sort of wants but also doesn't want because it would mean that he'd have to serve him. And it also highlights the recurrent theme of appearance versus reality, right? That he's a plain-dealing villain while Claudio, in his, in his estimation, is a flattering, honest man. And from Don John's perspective, the flattering honest man is more false than the plain dealing villain. So when we think of all these definitions together, we see that Don John declares himself plain dealing in his villainy. He's not pretended to be anything but what he is, a villain. Although, as we'll see in this play, he does pretend not to be a villain, and he turns into the flattering honest man in a way. He insults the relationship between Claudio and Don Pedro. He suggests it's not true friendship, not true love, but sycophancy. That it's one man flattering, sucking up to another one, and then the person on the higher status just accepting that, happy to be kissed up to, and giving out honors based on who flatters him the most. And he condemns the hypocrisy of courtly manners. He highlights how honor can often be superficial and devoid of honesty because, of course, as we might imagine, many people do just flatter their rulers in order to get a higher status, something that Don John says he won't do. And he disdains to serve another. He highlights the hierarchy, the hierarchical relationship between a ruler and his quote-unquote honest subjects. So interestingly enough, despite the fact that Don John is the villain of the play, he's also making a powerful statement about the hypocrisy of manners, the hypocrisy of flattery and compliments, and how hierarchy um, can interrupt or pose a certain problem for relationships that are supposedly an honest relationship of friendship. So this is again another state where 
he might be unintentionally saying things, revealing things, both about himself and about the larger issues in the play that he doesn't quite understand himself. Finally, let's look at Benedict. Uh, the context of his one of his uses of the word honest is when he's complaining about Claudio falling in love with Hero. This is in Act 2, Scene 3, when Benedict has a long speech where he says, I can't believe my best buddy used to be such a good soldier. Now he's all uh, obsessed with this woman, and it's totally changed him. And so one of the things he says is, he, that is Claudio, was wont to speak plain and to the purpose like an honest man and a soldier. And now he has turned orthography. His words are a very fantastical banquet, just so many strange dishes. So here is probably the most conventional use of honest in the play, at least from the ones we've looked at so far. Benedict defines an honest man as one who speaks plain and to the purpose. So he already gives us a definition of it. So looking at the OED, what definitions might be comparable or might match Benedict's definition? Well, um, OED, the first definition, 1C, someone who's not deserving of disgrace or reproach, someone who is respectable, decent, seemly, befitting. And then in the OED de uh, definitions 4B and 4D that are very close to our contemporary usage of honest, of a person that acts fairly with integrity, that is not disposed to lie, cheat, or steal, someone that is truthful, trustworthy, sincere, and someone who's free from guile or dissimulation, ingenuous, innocent, candid, straightforward, and especially when we talk about someone's face, an honest face, generally reflects a person's character. It's open and frank. So these are all the things that Benedict says Claudio used to be when he was an honest man and a soldier. Now, even though this seems like the most obvious and conventional usage of the meaning thus far, there's still a richness in it when we think in depth about what it means to be an honest man and a soldier in the terms that Benedict has provided. So when he says that Claudio was an honest man and a soldier, what does that mean? It meant he spoke in the way proper to a soldier, direct, respectable, appropriate to his serious station. How does a, a soldier speak? They speak respectfully, respectfully to their superiors. They talk about the business that needs to get done, and they do it. They're not, they don't speak fancy. He also spoke and acted honorably, without deceit, with sincerity. He was true to himself and true to what he meant. And when he spoke something, he meant exactly what he said. And he was open innocent, straightforward, a simple man. You could look at Claudio in the face and know who he was, understand his actions and words, and know what kind of a person you were dealing with before Claudio fell in love. What has happened? Benedict says, now he has turned orthography. His words are a very fantastical banquet, just so many strange dishes. Orthography is the study of spelling or writing. So what, what is Benedict saying? He's saying, well, Claudio in his speech have changed. Instead of speaking like a soldier, he speaks like a poet. Instead of using words that are simple and plain and refer to real things, real objects, he's using fantastical language. And instead of expressing himself simply and directly, he's using complex and strange language to express himself, which means we don't understand what he's saying. Claudio, this simple, straightforward, honest soldier that used to be easy to understand and easy to get, now Benedict doesn't know who this man is or what he's saying anymore because he's always talking of love and trying to find some new, fanciful, more exotic way to speak, to speak it. And there's also implied, remember how much Benedict disdains marriage as something that destroys manhood and masculinity. Perhaps there's an implication that Claudio is not as honest, not as sincere as he used to be. That when he spoke truthfully as a soldier, you knew what he wanted. But when he speaks of his love to Hero, do we know exactly what he wants? Or is he perhaps suggesting that 
he's trying to seduce Hero, that there's some secret desire or intention behind his words of love. Or maybe he's suggesting that Claudio is fooling himself about his feelings, that Claudio doesn't even know who he is anymore, doesn't know who his own self anymore. Again, ironic given what's going to happen to Benedict and the way he's going to be tricked into loving Beatrice. So we see, once more, even in the most simple, direct usage of the word honest, there's hidden meanings, there's a depth and a complexity of application. That is, the word is not just meaning truthful, but it says all these things about a person's character and their behavior and their relationships to others. And it resonates with what's going on in the individual character's life, in their storyline, their desires, and so forth. And perhaps Benedict here is revealing that he has been fooling himself all this time about his own feelings towards love, and most particularly towards Beatrice. So for this week's writing assignment, you're going to be doing the same exercise with Othello. So you want to pick a word that's complex, a word like honest that has many different potential meanings, many different uses. So I'd recommend finding a few different words that seem important in the play and looking them up in the Oxford English Dictionary and uh, seeing which ones are the most interesting to you, which ones have the most surprising, interesting, complex, uh, rich definitions. And of course, make sure that you're focusing on meanings that would have been current in Shakespeare's time. If you're looking at meanings that are not current until the 1700s or 1800s, that's going to be too late. So look for meanings that are are current in the 1500s and 1600s when Shakespeare would have been writing. Then you want to take that word and go to the concordance. Go to the Shakespeare concordance and find all the different instances of it being used in the play. And I definitely recommend looking for words that are used by multiple different characters. So for example, the word honest, as we saw, is used by a lot of different characters in much Ado, it's also used by a lot of different characters in Othello. So words that Othello uses, Iago uses, Desdemona uses, etc. And again, a word that's preferably used throughout the play, because the more it's used and the more widely it's used by different characters in different contexts and situations, the more different meanings it's going to have. So this will help you to find the interesting portions of the text, and, and you're going to pick two or three instances that seem most interesting to you where the words, different meanings, are being evoked by Shakespeare's usage. And then you start sort of plugging in the different definitions into the instances in which the word is used and see how do the different meanings transform what the character is saying, transform what's happening in that situation. And it's not that there's going to be only one meaning per usage. Someone might be using the word honest or whatever in multiple ways. There might be overlapping meanings and multiple connotations, perhaps even contradictory connotations coming from the usage of that word, as we've seen in our lecture here. So think about how to enrich the statement. It's not just replacing the word honest with one definition or another, but that multiple definitions are being evoked, so we have a richness, a depth of meaning, a wealth of meaning being created, uh, and that's what helps us to understand the complexity of Shakespeare's work. Finally, you want to think about how these different meanings resonate with the larger issues of the play? What do they reveal about the character's thoughts or desires or motivations? And how do they reflect what's going on in the story? How do they reflect the plot? How do they refle reflect the themes? So we've seen in this lecture how the word honest brings, us, brings up questions of honor, of uh, male uh, authority and, and reputation, how it also brings up questions and issues to do with female chastity and sexuality and male anxiety over female sexuality, how it deals with questions of appearance as well as questions of truth. So it, it expands, it's through the words and through the multiple meanings that Shakespeare really develops the complex ideas that he's exploring in these plays. So think about how the individual uses contribute to the overall meaning of the text. 
that's it for this lecture. If you have any questions, of course, you can email, call, or text, or post to Blackboard. And best of luck, best wishes with your work this, this week. And again, if you have any questions about anything, please feel free to contact me.